For the next few weeks, I'm attempting to cycle across the entire country of Thailand. I'm certainly not a cyclist and I'm not even that fit. So this is going to be quite the challenge. But I absolutely love this country and I love to have adventures. So let's have it. In the previous episode, I set off from m a i Sai, which is the northerly most point of the country, and after two full days of cycling, I made it to the lovely city of p a i a o I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and if you're enjoying this series. And let's begin. Good morning. Welcome back to the adventure of cycling across Thailand on my bicycle, which, by the way, is named Nora, Nora the Explorer. So thank you to Barbara and a few other people that helped me choose a name. We are leaving p a i a o I was a little bit worse for wear when I arrived here after my first 100 plus k i l o m e t e r day. And I'll be honest with you, I had to take a day off. I had to take a rest day. Yesterday, when I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, I'd hardly slept, and um, I had diarrhea. So I didn't really feel like going on the bike. I gave my body a bit of a rest, and I just enjoyed this beautiful area and went down by the lake, enjoyed the sunset, enjoyed a cold beer, and enjoyed p a i a o which is a really laid-back city on a gorgeous lake. But we are not resting in today's episode. In today's episode, my plan is distance: 58 kilometers to a little bridge where there's a town. We're going to stay there tonight, and then we're going to hit the mountains again. There is one mountain climb today, so we will be doing a couple of hundred meters elevation. So we're all packed up, raring to go. So let's go. Now that I had a few days' experience behind me, I had learned that pushing myself over the 100 k i l o m e t e r mark on a day's ride, anyway, just wasn't feasible at the minute. My fitness and my endurance is just not up to that level. So shooting for a town only 60 k i l o m e t e r s away gave me much more confidence to relax and to go at a much more sustainable pace. I want to share with you my breakfast routine that I've been doing recently. And I probably will be doing for the rest of the series. Most importantly, bananas. Then I love these. This is like a electrolyte drink brand for 12 baht, and I mix it with my water. And then you cannot beat a 40 baht ice americano with no sugar for your caffeine boost and your morning coffee. Cheap, and if you ask me, the best coffee in the world. And then something that I have all the time, not just when I'm cycling, but In normal life, I love this. This is like a prawn o m e l e t with chives and rice, and it's 42 bar, I believe, and it is so yummy, so good. So all of this, you've got your carbs, you've got your potassium, you've got your caffeine, you've got your electrolytes, all for just over 100 baht. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, you can't go wrong with that breakfast, but you can go wrong if you cycle for too far on these Thai highways. These main roads offer a much more direct route, but they do give that added danger of the massive trucks and the cars that whiz right past you. So since today was less daunting in terms of distance, I actually decided to take a longer, more scenic route through the country roads. These roads would actually add a few hours, but at least I would be much more in touch with the surroundings, further away from the dangerous trucks. And for me, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to cycle across Thailand. Out here, you see the country in a whole new way, and it gives you a new perspective. Of course, I can't avoid the main roads the entire way, and I'll be using them throughout my trip almost every day. But at least for this stretch in the morning, I was far away from the traffic, and much more in touch with this beautiful side of the country. After a glorious morning's ride through Lampang, I decided to pull over to make my favorite cocktail of liquids, electrolytes, just to refuel, to rehydrate. 
and it also gave me a chance to show off the new part of my bike. Yeah, this is the new phone holder. Thank you to my friend Kevin who drove over from Chiang Mai to give it to me and to uh, have dinner with me yesterday. And uh, yeah, here it is. It's um, really sturdy, but the best part is you just pull that down like that. I mean, look how easy that is to get out. You just pull it down. This piece here moves down like that. And it's bolted in here. And it's on this really strong mount that's on the handlebars. And I just, he said to me, you know, how's things on the bike? And I said, yeah, everything's fine except for my phone holder. I bought a cheap one. Never buy cheap mounts, guys. Even my um, GoPro, not GoPro, 360 mount. This thing cost me like $35. But look at it, it's metal, it's sturdy. And I just went cheap on the phone holder and I immediately regretted it. So thank you, Kevin, for the upgrade. Hello. So welcome to a hill climb here in Northern Thailand. It's been about half an hour. I've had my head down. I've had my podcast in my ear, cheering me on. I'm listening to Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer football legends and it's getting me through it it's nice to set off early so we can get these climbs out the way and we're doing okay left knee hurts the pain from the end of the 100k ride has come back so there's something wrong there but I'm just hoping like any football injury I can walk it off or cycle it on Obviously cycling on this highway is not ideal, but there is a large, hard shoulder. Funny story actually, when I was planning this trip, I opened Google Maps and for some reason I couldn't find the cycle option. You know, let's say you're in the UK and you want to go from Newcastle to Edinburgh or something. Google Maps will give you loads of different options. Driving a car, public transport, walking, and of course, a cycle and it will give you the best route to take for cyclists. But in Thailand, the cycling option just isn't there. At first I thought I had to update my Google Maps, but no, there just isn't a cycling network in this country. <laughs> Hence why we cycle next to the big trucks. It might seem super dangerous, and technically it is, but here in Thailand, this is normal, okay? I've lived here and I've traveled across it for years. I know not to get myself into mischief and using my experience of motorcycling across this country for years, I know as long as I stay in my lane, I should be fine. Oh, I think we've just hit the top of this mountain. Look at this. Up ahead, it's starting to go down. Whoa. We'll switch gear. We'll follow this truck down. And we'll use his slipstream. <laughs> Woo. Thankfully, when it comes to cycling, what goes up must come down. And these downhill sections were just pure bliss. All that hard work of constantly going uphill, constantly battling the heat, is finally rewarded with the fast downhill section. The only thing about the downhill parts is that they just never seem to last very long. It seems like after a few seconds, you're back on the flat or straight into another climb. <laughs> okay, so this is a bit of a shame. We are in this gorgeous town, famous for this beautiful bridge and I wanted to cycle across for the video, but um, yeah, I don't know what this says obviously, but it seems to say don't drive across this or do anything naughty to do with this bridge. Um, I, just, I did just see an old lady cycle, well, push her bike across. So I, I, think I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay to stand on it and maybe walk across a little bit. But uh, it's certainly seen better days. It's very rusted, but it's a beautiful wooden bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but they've built this other nicer bridge for the roads, for the cars, I should say. And uh, because it is the, coming up to the hottest part of the year, 
you can see that it hasn't rained very much for months. So it's very low, this river. Today's gonna to be one of those days where it's just turned into a bit of a half day because I'm gonna stay in this town because the next town is another 90 kilometers from here and I've just done 40, 45 and I don't have it in me to do 90 extra today. I'm gonna to enjoy this town. I'm gonna to come back in the afternoon and enjoy this bridge and see if it comes alive in the evening, in the late afternoon, because that's when Thai people get out and about. Everybody's taking a nap right now. <laughs> So there was no need for me to push myself 90 extra kilometers to the next city. And it was actually a refreshing change of pace to find my place of rest for the evening and call it a day after only six hours. I found this little hotel, only 750 baht for the night. It was just what I needed. It was clean, it was cheap, and it was centrally located in this little town, basically. And so that evening I walked back to the bridge to enjoy the atmosphere and the gorgeous evening rolled in around me down by the river. Turns out that in the evenings the local kids have their football practice down here and I found a cool restaurant and I met the local who owned it and we had a few beers, sank a few whiskeys, watched the sunset and watched the kids practice football under the glorious and beautiful wooden bridge. It had been a wonderful, easy day in comparison to the previous few, but tomorrow and for the next few days, there will be many more challenges and stressful things to overcome. So if you want to continue watching, click on the next episode right here, right now.